It's, and huh? looks like it's in presentation mode now. Thanks, Megan. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So um, this presentation's uh, coming at things from a little, a very different view, I guess, of um, a vocabulary user. Um, myself as a soil ecologist, um, some of the challenges uh, we've been we've encountered. Um, so the application challenges of applying controlled vocabs in standardising soil data. Um, I had no faith in the internet either, so all slides, we'll see how we go. Um, so this work's taken place under a number of soil data information related projects that the team here at Surrey Fair Junior partners on, including catchment management, discovery portals, um, delivering data through the ARDC supported Agriculture Research Federation founding project. And uh, the focus of this talk will be the work that's being done under the Soil CRC's Visualising Australasia's Soils project. So the aim of the uh, Soil CRC uh, Visualising Australasia's Soils project, so that's BAS, um, is the creation of an interoperable spatial knowledge system for um, the Soil CRC participants and the broader agricultural community um, with access to data information and knowledge on Australasian soils. So the focus of the vocab work to date has been to assist with the standardisation of grower group and catchment management data um, being made discoverable through the platform. So just in short, uh, soils related data is made discoverable through the VAS platform uh, from a number of sources, but today I'm focusing on the data of uh, farmer groups and catchment management authorities. Now this data comes from providers in Excel format in uh, non-standardised structures and undergo so it undergoes an initial assessment. We map it in using an Excel template and this is loaded into a database um, and from there it is published and reviewed by providers and made available by various through uh, various web applications. Uh, so the application of controlled vocabs um, helps deliver on most grower group and catchment, catchment management authority use cases in some way, um, including a range of topics around uh, search and discovery, communications, providing context um, and trust, such as um, assisting with access rights and um, building interface functionality. So as data service providers and researchers, our role is um, as users of controlled vocabularies and when necessary, we're creators and managers. So the focus of this talk is how we're using controlled vocabs to standardise data and the, um, the challenges that we've encountered. So our current approach and solutions and would really appreciate any, it's a good opportunity for any thoughts and feedback um, from the vocabulary community out there. So this is a simplified um, uh, observation and project content, um, project content data model and it highlights the vocabularies we're currently using to help standardise soil data. They include properties being observed, the procedures that are being used to make the observations and what is being measured, so the specimen. So we use vocabs to describe the results where there are certain values, to describe the features uh, and there are the relationships between the features, as well as some project specific information such as organisation type and commodity. And we're also using units you know, of measure control vocabularies in a number of ways, as highlighted here. So here's just an example um, of the data viewed through the interface. Um, you can see observations at depth, which are selected from a certain location from a map. So hover over and you'll see the control vocabularies used to describe the observable properties, the procedure used to um, measure those observable properties, uh, units of measure and the results. 
So here's just a bit of an excerpt of some interface functionality, which is in development. And they include search, filtering, styling, observations at depth, and working on trends over time and um, reporting templates. So now here, if, um, I'm going into some of the various challenges we've encountered um, as vocabulary users, um, using vocabs to describe the soil data and some of the approaches that we've taken. So one of the first questions we um, come up against is, is it appropriate to use international terms to describe our soil data? So in this example, is it appropriate to use these terms to describe our soil features? Uh, this is a question um, for the Australian soils community. Um, we did, we've used terms from INSPIRE and the examples that we've applied or are applying in some cases are shown in blue in this diagram. Uh, as, a, as a vocabulary user, I found it quite challenging to find and interpret, it, uh, interpret vocabularies for that describe relationship types and the roles of um, the roles of the relationship roles <laughs> between the features. Um, so I eventually found them, and we have applied. Um, We've applied these um, and these terms were from the re um, relationship ontology, which is intended for use um, with biological ontology, and they're shown in orange on this diagram. So, in regard to uh, sampling, spatial sampling feature sampling methods, um, these vocabularies were quite challenging to find, and when they were found, um, we found them under GS Thesaurus. Um, the definitions of the concepts read more like um, sample types rather than sampling methods. So we're not 100% convinced that we've got the right vocabulary terms here yet. So a question we frequently encountered asking all the time is how do we know um, that the vocab we're um, selecting and using is persistent and trusted? How do we know it's actively governed and preferably by an authoritative body? And who is an authoritative body in some cases? Uh, we've had to make a lot of best judgment calls. Um, we tend to select vocabulary terms which appear to be from formalised, versioned and governed ontologies rather than project or experimental base. So here's an example where we, so we have avoided using experimental OGC soil data interoperability vocabularies, which are experimental, obviously. Um, yeah, so when vocabulary terms seem to describe the same or similar concepts, um, we're challenged with um, which identifier to select. So where possible, we've tried to use vocabularies which are referring or from the source. Um, such as here, we've had to choose between an experimental term in linked data registry for an observable property. Um, when we can see that it, we can now see that it's in the um, environmental ontology um, from the chemical entities of biological interest. So we should, pro should probably be using um, that identifier rather than the linked data registry one. So I found in general that I um, found it challenging um, observable property vocabularies. So finding finding those in re um, in relation to soils, um, we've been using mostly experimental terms, creating as created as part of a project. Uh, that's available um, in the link CSIRO link data registry at the moment, which is really not ideal, but that's what we're using for now. And when we have found observable properties out there, the question is, are they the ones we should be applying um, to soils data? Um, so, for example, we have concentration of ammonium in soil here. Um, that's from the phenotype and trait ontology. 
And here you can see we've used um, a stable concept um, for observable property of sulphur from um, e-reefs. So you can see, however, that the unit of measure is in milligrams per litre. So what implication does this have for us when we're applying it to sulphur concentration, um, which can be report, which we're reporting um, in multiple units of measure, and none of which are um, milligrams per litre. Uh, so where vocabs have not been discoverable, we had to create them, and I'm constantly asking. We are constantly asking the question, are we sure they don't exist out there or have we just not found them? Never 100% sure. Um, so we've had, we have needed to create cell chemical procedure vocabularies um, and asserted values that we receive from, from providers. Um, we have gotten up with, um, with uh, Simon and Jonathan's help through the AgriFed project, the, um, the Green Book, so that's um, Australian Standard for Chemical Methods. And when we do um, create vocabularies, um, at the moment we're using the Excel to LDR tool and the user interface of CSIRO Link Data Registry. So some considerations here in this approach where we come up against is upskilling of um, staff, time and effort, um, particularly, for example, the Green Book, getting that up as a control of vocabulary, um, selecting or creating URIs which are unique and reflect the governance arrangements, and considerations of the ongoing governance, maintenance and support, and including a uh, potential role for Research Vocabs Australia going forward for us. So you'll see um, here the registers that have been created and the collections made available to help describe soils data in um, the CSIRO link data registry. So the um, Simon, uh, Simon and Linda Gregory have gotten up the Australian Soil Land Survey Field Handbook. Um, at, at current, the uh, Landform classifiers, soil profile classifiers. Um, there's a soil chemical methods I spoke about, and there's a register that, um, oh, sorry, a register that was created for. Um, just realised, can you? You might be able to see yourselves on the screen there. Um, the register we created for EDU, so main, uh, created and maintained by Australian Higher Education researchers. Um, and registered for ourselves, Federation University. So note the registers and the URIs create, reflect um, the governance arrangements. So some challenges in applying soil chemical procedures when we uh, got that book up as um, a control vocabulary and data comes in um, in Excel format um, from data providers not necessarily using standard terms. Um, here are some of the challenges we encountered. So on the left, this is the kind of information you see from a data provider. Here they've got more, example one, they've got more than one code. So um, the pH example, um, we've had to create a generic procedure code. Um, the ammonium one up the top, the provider clarified that it was indeed 7C2B. Um, so I've had to go back to the provider. Um, should we have included species on the end of those uh, procedure codes? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but that's what we've done. Um, so example two, this is an example where you get multiple um, carbon procedures coming in and it's not clear and it's just not clear um, what type of method is used or whether it's a green book code. So again, we've had to go back and clarify with the provider. And it, so this is challenging. It's not always um, possible with historic data to get that clarification. Um, we've got combinations of procedures 
and calculations within the one term. So we've had to create an identifier with the description that indicates that this procedure is a calculation case based. This is a um, this is an identifier saying that the procedure is a calculation based on an under on an underlying method. Um, so example four is that's that's just not a green book method at all. So we've had to create a new vocabulary for the Bromfield method. And then example five, we've got extensions of the green book. So where the method was applied a different way to what it was intended and extended out. So some challenges we've encountered when applying the Australian standard for soil profile descriptions. We've just begun this work, so describing soil profile data. An example, um, so the main challenge is that um, observable properties um, of the green book, of the yellow book, which are up, um, the definitions tell us something about how the observable property was actually measured. In example one, it says that field texture was measured by or using the Northcote Triangle. Um, so it implies the method in there. And we have results come in where you don't know the method that the provider used. And some of the um, results um, are not classifiers identified in the yellow book. Um, the example of colour, uh, for example, they say the um, method, the procedure is kind of implicit in this observable property of colour as well, that they use the Munsell colour system. We get results in that all results that come in are not in accordance so far with the Munsell colour system. So how do we apply, apply these observable property identifiers from the yellow book and the classifiers? So it's very much a work in progress. It's kind of the most recent um, recent work we're investigating. Or investigating. So um, the question is, do we need to create um, identifiers for, for procedures? Do we need to create new observable properties when for the uh, to describe the data from providers which um, do not match the yellow book observable property? Or measured in a different way. Um, we've got the classifiers of the yellow book which are up but we have data's, data coming in um, which use classifiers or assertive values that do not match the yellow book so we're having to get up um, uh, classifiers there. And some more just some more random thoughts for Australian soil scientists chemists, ontologists, is it's quite a challenge linking the observed prop properties in some cases to um, the species for the Green Book procedures. For example, um, extractable copper, this method 12A1. So should we be associating it with um, copper cation, copper group molecular entity, which one? At the moment we're doing this in our database. Um, the definitions for the procedures do not exist. The, de the definitions within the Green Book are really lengthy. They're pages long. Um, so that's a role potentially for the governing body of that um, and authors of that Green Book future versions. And um, so appropriate governance and extension of these vocabularies is a question. And um, some more thoughts for, um, in particular, regarding the Australian soil and so the, uh, the yellow book <laughs> is, um, so what is being measured, so the species um, are not available as control vocabularies. Um, and in most, in most cases, or in a lot of cases, we need Australian specific definitions, for example, um, for which are available, but just not as controlled vocabularies. They're, they're buried within the yellow book. So the definition um, of the species gravel, um, clay, sand, silt. And this slide's just really an ending slide of recognising that 
we don't exist, this work doesn't exist at all in a bubble. So we need to remain informed of the work and the roles of the various national states, territories, their partners, the global community. So here are just some to paint the bigger picture. And there's all the, thanks to the young contributors, the, these are the um, farming systems and catchment management authorities data that we've been working with. And the university partners on, are the research partners on VAS, which I believe actually some of them might be on the call, Brandon and David. And also uh, Andrew um, from FedUni is on uh, this uh, call as well. So any questions? That's it, thanks.